is 7.33 p.m. on Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. Happy New Year, everyone. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm calling this meeting of the board to order. I'd like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. So from members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. And Elaine Hoffman. Here. And... I am here as well. We do have three members of the board who are unable to attend this evening. Um, so we we do have four members, so we can still conduct business and vote on things with four members. Um, but the, the rule that a positive vote does require the vote of four members um, does still apply. Um, from the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. Good to have you. And I don't believe Mr. Cunningham is joining us this evening. Okay, appearing for docket 3764212 Pleasant Street, we have uh, Nellie Aikenhead. Here. Nellie, good to see you. Appearing for docket 3776-49 Dixon Avenue, we have Verma Sudir. Good to see you. Appearing for docket 3777-95 George Street, we have Jane Youngren and Marianne Henley. Make sure one of you is here. I see me. I, I saw Jane, Jane Young and her name. Her name yep. is on here. Okay. Um, and then for docket 37809096 J Jason Street, uh, we have Mark and Brandy Hoffner. Yep, here. Great. Have you all with us? So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects. Signed into law on March 29, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you your screen name, or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Okay, we do not have any administrative business to conduct this meeting, so we'll move straight into uh, public hearings. Before opening the public hearings, here's some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves for themselves and make their presentation to the board. I will then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on any matters. Any vote taken at this hearing will be preliminary until the written decision is approved by the board at a subsequent meeting. All votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. 
So with that, the first item um, is item two on <clears throat> our agenda, docket number 3764, 212 Pleasant Street uh, as a continuance of a from a prior meeting. And I would uh, open the floor to Nellie Aikenhead to tell us where we are today. Okay, hello everybody. We actually sold that property in December. We're no longer the owners, so we are no longer pursuing our permits and we would like to withdraw our application. Good. Um, so I think it's clear to the board what is is happening here. Um, the deed, I believe the deed was passed in December, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, and so whereas the applicant is no longer in possession of the property, um, the board should accept the uh, request for a withdrawal. So with that, may I have a motion to accept the withdrawal of the application for 212 Pleasant Street? Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you, Mr. Handlin. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So there's a vote of the board to accept the withdrawal of the application for 212 Pleasant Street. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Handlin? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. When the chair votes aye, that application is withdrawn. <clears throat> Thank, thank you, very you much. and thank you for all of the time that you put into this. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. With that, we will move on to the next item, um, which is, excuse me, item three on the agenda, docket 3776, 49 Dixon Avenue. And so if I could ask the applicant uh, to introduce himself and tell us what they're proposing. Hi everyone, uh, this is Sudhir. Thank you for the opportunity to take our project. And uh, so basically we have a Cape house, which is built in 1954. We have been living in this house for almost eight years now. We bought it in 2017. And uh, uh, we really like the neighborhood, but uh, uh, as we uh, grew as a family and uh, being an old house, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to add some space. And uh, and renovate the existing house, so we are <clears throat> we are proposing to extend uh, uh, the house in the backyard, which we have plenty of I think space, and also go up in the height to what is allowed by the town around I think thirty five feet, so make a uh, a three story kind of house, two two and a half story thing. So I think the. Uh, a variance is because of there are some laws regarding the total area that needs to be added, which is coming around more than I think 50% and then some uh, 750 square feet uh, addition that will totally add. Means mm -hmm. It leaves uh, like it's a cave, so it's a shed on the top and then we have a basement where we have garage also for one car. So it's I think the current area is around 1700 including the basement and then it will go up to some three thousand or four thousand something total numbers. It's in the it's in the file, but I don't exact numbers. But so I think that's the that's a proposal. The front of the house remains the same, mm -hmm. and the side remains the same. It's just extension in the back in the backyard and on the top. In fact, the the deck is also being changed from right now. It's on the if you stand in the front of the property, it's on the right side. So that deck will come off and go on the left side of the property, which is the, the other open side of the property because the property is open from the three sides. Thank you. Um, yes. Do you, no, I think that's good. Um, I know you had um, an architect involved in the project. I don't know if your architect yes. was in attendance and if they wanted to show the plans or if they wanted us to show the plans. I think our architect is Rob. He has joined us kindly. So maybe yeah, that's that's me. Um I'm happy to show the plans if, if that's easier for you guys. Uh either way. Um I can go ahead and <clears throat> pull them up. Okay, great. So okay. You should be the D1 sheet, I think. Yeah. So these are just the demolition plans of the existing house. Um, so the the uh, hatched walls, the darker walls, and the walls that we're taking down. Um, so we're basically, uh, you know, demo demolishing a considerable portion of the existing structure. Um, you know, all of the uh, upper floors coming off, a good portion of the 
first floor and uh, all of the rear exterior wall is coming out um, for the addition. And then the basement, we're, we're taking some walls out um, and we are uh, removing some of the rear foundation to extend the garage. Um, so yeah, if you want to go to the next sheet, I can just walk you through the plans real quick. Okay, so the uh, the basement plan, so what we're planning to do overall is basically do an 18 foot addition off the back. Um, on the basement level, uh, we're, we're going to extend the existing garage to create some tandem parking down there. Um, and then just uh, reconfigure some things at a laundry room and a bathroom and a bit of a playroom in the back. Um, at the first floor, um, we're looking to do a small guest suite in the front there where the, the curse was located uh, with a bathroom en suite. Um, and then the living room area on the left is actually existing. So that's going to remain. Um, so yeah, that's existing. Um, but we are adding the kitchen in the back and then a, a large uh, great room dining room area. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's um, uh, where the addition is uh, going to be placed. Um, we're also, as Sudhir had mentioned, where there's an existing deck on the right side, which we're going to take out and just put some access stairs in. Um, and we're relocating, relocating the deck on the left hand of this plant, which is where those double doors are going out um, in the back there, correct. Yeah, and then we're just putting a small front porch um, on the uh, front entry to kind of make that look a little bit nicer and uh, give a place to stand when you're walking into the building. Um, so if you can go to the next sheet. Um, so the second floor, Currently, it's a three-bedroom house, uh, so we're looking to expand it to a four-bedroom house. Um, so we're really, you know, doing a whole new second floor. Um, the rear of the house is where the new master suite would be going over the addition. Um, so there's a walk-in closet, uh, a full bathroom, exactly, yep. And then we have two other bedrooms on this floor um, and then a small office. Um, one of the bedrooms has an ensuite bathroom, and then there's a uh, uh, just a common bath. Um, to, to kind of round off this floor. And then the upper floor, um, we're just looking to add some storage um, in the back. We're, we're doing a cathedral ceiling over the master bath uh, bedroom. So that's where that X is showing. That's a, that's an open ceiling space. Um, and then we have some kind of small bonus rooms that we added in. Um, some of the ceilings here start to get pretty low. So the area of a seven foot ceiling is, is fairly limited basically to the center part of this floor plan. Um, mm -hmm. And then lastly, we have a small, um, small little kind of seated seating area, exterior seating area for calling a porch on the left-hand side. Yep, exactly. Um, and then uh, the last sheet we have elevations, so I can just kind of walk you guys to see that real quick. Um, so the proposed front elevation, um, so we have a, a small shed dormer at the top to just give a little more headroom to that upper floor. Um, and, uh, you know, we're doing basically all new finishes, um, all new windows, so it's, you know, almost a, a, uh, a new structure in a way, as far as visually looking at it from the exterior. Um, so, you know, double hung windows, things like that. Um, and then showing the roof overhangs. Um, the, the garage, as you can see, is located below the first floor. So there's a bit of a gray drop into the garage. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, similar in the in the uh, other elevations, just trying to, uh, you know, create some clabber siding. We did a little bit of a different siding at the, at the upper floor to kind of differentiate that from the, from the lower level. But you know, kind of your standard new uh, kind of modern look, but tried to keep it pretty residential to to fit in with what's in the neighborhood there now. So, yeah. so the just to confirm, so on the so this is the front elevation. So this is the Correct. Dixon Avenue side. Correct. Yep. Um, this then is on the side street. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So you can see on the left hand side there, the lower left hand side is where that new deck would go. Okay. And so this is a essentially a 35 foot high wall. Yeah, we're right at the, the max. Yeah. Well, I should say uh, it's slightly less than 35. It's 35 from the average grade to the peak. Mm -hmm. And the average grade is slightly below where the actual grade is. So it's oh, okay. you know, maybe like 34. <laughs> but all right. Um, and then this is the rear elevation that's facing the back. And then this is facing the abutting neighbor. Exactly. Um, Correct. And those are, as you have described, the stairs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, and then I did just, um, oops, the, do you see the plot plan now? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the plot okay. plan. Um, yeah. So the proposed addition in the back is 18 by 32. Um, we're showing the proposed deck there on the side. Uh, one thing I did notice that the deck on the left-hand side, that's actually an error that that's going to be gone. So we're just set, have the proposed landing and overhang. Uh, so that, okay. that can, 
would be removed. And then there's um, also this is are you contemplating this change to the driveway? Um yes. Yes, yeah. so a driveway is right now, I think, 10 feet wide. So we are planning for, I think, 16 feet something because you can't open the doors of the cars right now. They bang on the uh, the walls, which like, because the driveway is just slanting down the line. So you can't mm -hmm. open the doors properly, actually, the car. So just to increase the lit, uh, basically with a little bit so you can don't bang the side walls by opening the car. Oh, okay. And so would there still be a retaining wall on this side here at the edge of the driveway? Yes. Okay. It is currently there. I think it'll, it'll be pushed out some maybe six feet because we are having some space there. Okay. Um, so the application that came to us um, it's seeking relief under section 542B6, which is the, the large additions portion of the, the zoning bylaw. So if there's an addition outside the existing foundation of 750 square feet or more, or more than 50%, of the volume of that, uh, excuse me, the area of the existing house, then a special permit is required from the board um, with a couple of additional findings, which we'll review. And also um, under 539, so 539 is the section that deals with uh, porches and decks um, that extend into um, the, the setbacks. Um, and then when while we were doing the review, um, there were a couple of other things that came up. Um, so the, the bigger one, I'm gonna go back to the side elevation here. So in order to be a, f an, a level in a house is considered a story. If the distance from the average grade to the ceiling is four foot six or greater. And going by the dimensions here on the drawing with the basement at, at level at 112, average grade at 113.79, and the basement height being six foot eight, the exposed height of the basement is four foot ten and a half, which qualifies it as a story in which case this is a three and a half story house and the code um, only allows up to two and a half stories by right. Um, and so we wanted to bring that to your attention right away to see if that was your intent. Mm, I think, no, that was not the intent. I think that's where I think we got the call from, like I think town informed us to apply for that also and that we did, but Right, Rob? Yeah, that's that's one thing we we did miss um that that was off by a few inches. So we uh so the town said, you know, they got in touch with us and said, hey, you know, you're over on the stories. Um, so that's why we submitted the application or submitted the additional variance for consideration. Do they lose a connection? Maybe. I think yes. I think okay. I don't. Yeah. Oh, here he is. He's back again. <laughs> You're muted, Christian. You're muted, Christian. We can't hear. Oh, sorry about that. I thought things were awfully quiet, and then all of a sudden my screen went blank. So, I apologize for that. Um, that was an explanation that really knocked you over. Yeah, it really was. Um. But so you so basically, I just wanted to confirm that uh, were you aware that this is drawn as three and a half stories at this point, and is that what you're intending? No, we 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 were we were made aware. We weren't aware when we submitted it, um, and uh, we were made aware. So we uh, submitted the variance to to try to okay. seek relief for that as well. Um, okay. So yeah, it's off by like you said exactly four foot ten inches. So it's off by a few inches. Um, and you know it's an existing condition, so we're we're hoping that uh, you know you guys consider that as a, something we could proceed with. Okay. Um, and then the the expansion of the width of the driveway, it's less than twenty feet, which a driveway can be up to twenty feet. Um, okay. And so, just wanted to confirm that. 
but there's not yeah, a dimension would, on the drawing. Yeah, we. I mean, either way, we'll keep it. We'll keep it twenty feet or less for sure. Okay. Um. And then I was look looking back over, out on the uh, so the porches and deck. So, if, um, if porches are under five three nine a, um. I think that so the required setback is 25 feet in this district and there's two front yards. So I think that this porch is the one that requires relief, but I believe this deck is actually compliant. Um, but we'll make sure that um, whatever decision we make that it includes uh, both the deck and the porch. Um, in the in whatever decision we have um and then the we also the other thing that often comes up is usable open space but uh the surveyor has nicely indicated the area of the usable open space here on the on the site um and so the property is compliant with the usable open space requirement and the landscaped uh the usable landscaped area So those are the usual site constraints we see. Are there any, um, I see on here that the, the trees are marked out. Are there, I, I visited the site over the weekend. I don't believe there are any trees in the area of the proposed addition, is that correct? Yes, there is no trees. They're all on the boundaries of the property, but not on where we are planning. Okay. Um, okay, so, what then what the board is going to be reviewing, uh, we are reviewing um, the front porch and the the, the side deck. Uh, we are reviewing um, the large addition and the request. The, those are both uh, special permit actions. And then the other would be um, a variance for an additional story um, which would need a separate set of findings. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to the board if there are questions from the board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. So uh, this is actually directed, I think, to Mr. Uh, Pachone. Um, <clears throat> the uh, variance is required under is governed by state law, and there are several criteria for it, the first of which is that the uh, need for relief must stem from the uh, <clears throat> unique characteristics of the property, uh, particularly with respect to uh, uh, topography, soil, and Roger, help me with, I'm blanking on the third one. It's, it's something shape. earthy, lot shape. shape. And so here we have a topography that is an extraordinary. The lot shape is pretty much uh rectangular um and uh there's nothing that indicates that there's anything special about the soil conditions and it doesn't really look any different to me when i went out there from the various other lots that are going on and all of the conditions in state law including this one have to be met we can't just ignore one and so i wonder if you could take your best shot as to why it is that your need to relief uh, is unique and to this parcel and uh, arises from uh, soil topography and um, and shape. Um, well, I would guess I'd have to say that, you know, it's an existing condition um, that, you know, we're very close on. Um, you know, is this a unique situation? You know, it's hard to make that case. Um, I mean, maybe a question for the board, since we're so close on that measurement, is it permissible to just raise the grade around the building? Well, that would, <clears throat> by, you have control over your application. And yeah. so if you have a way of, of avoiding this problem, through that way or or any others so that you are, are within the bounds of the zoning bylaw or something we can grant a special permit on as opposed to a variance, then you're obviously 
are somewhat better off because state law is not very congenial to the reasons why it is that you would like this relief. Yeah. Okay. Without seeing a proposal, I can't tell you what we would do uh, in particular. I don't know of any particular reason why you can't change the grading uh, is the way in the way you want to do it. But, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously a, a variance is a, a steep slope for you uh, to talk to, to use a topo topological metaphor and it would be better to find some of the way of compliance probably yeah okay understandable um yeah i think we might have to go that route then um but yeah i'm familiar with the hardship laws um so i understand where you're where you're coming from okay. are there other questions from the board i'm a little curious if you had um referred to the town's uh, residential design guidelines at all in your proposal? Um, yeah, I believe we looked at those a while back. Um, okay. You know, could I cite them to you right now? Probably not, but, <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, we, I think we used that when we, when we started out originally and, you know, when Sue here and I first, first had met. Um, certainly. So the, the house is, is, would be considered single family medium lot, um, which are sort of like the single family houses, lots that are between five and seven thousand square feet. Um, this is a, a fairly good example. A lot of them have the garages under, uh, which is sort of correct for that type. Um, others of them will have a driveway that runs up the side of the house. Um, usually, the uh, if there is a garage, it's usually under or you know in the far back of the house. Um, the guidelines do sort of discourage having a wider driveway. Um, and they do sort of discourage and encourage more sort of small scale um, pieces. So this house does, you know, I'd asked before about the, the single vertical plane. Um, there definitely are some places in here where there are um, canopies that are added um, to the different size sides of the house. Um, there's the deck, there's the porch. There's the entrance, the side entrance steps um, on the on the um, on the opposite side. Um, the house seems a little out of context for the neighborhood. Um, I, I, can you just talk me through the the roof shape? I think that's what's causing me the most. Most um, preservation. Yeah, did you want to bring up the, the elevation again? And I can kind of show you oh, what we're thinking sure. there. Okay, so um, it's essentially, so the, the front elevation, we, we have a, a gable um, over the kind of the front entry area and then a shed dormer. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, we used to kind of break up the front elevation. Um, and then if you look at the side elevation with the, the deck, so that there's the plane of the roof that runs. Uh, so it's kind of a, a soft side gable, I guess you could say. The, the front plane at the front of the, the building runs back and there's a peak over that door to get out of the uh, get out to the uh, third floor porch area. And then there's basically like you could say like a shed roof that runs all the way to the back. So, you know, we, we, we designed this roof, especially the back part, just to give a little more headroom up the, up at that upper floor. Um, you know, it's it's pretty tight up there right now. And just to give them a little bit of extra bonus space was mm -hmm. why we, we kind of designed the roof the way we did. Um, and, you know, the house shape was a little, little tricky to work with to try to do, you know, a full kind of gable roof that we you, you might see on a, a, you know, more of a typical colonial home. Um, so, that's kind of the direction we went with this. Okay. Um, this is the, that upper floor. So as you pointed out before, this is that section that's open to the master bedroom below. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that'll be a cathedral space. Um, you know, we put some some transom windows above above the uh, the windows in that room, so there's a little bit of extra daylight getting in there. Um, and then, yeah, so uh, adjacent to that, just some unfinished storage space 
um, and then those uh, those two bonus rooms that we have. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the ceiling height is here at the at the back edge? Um, it's fairly low. I can tell you in one second. Um, I'd say it's about three foot nine, roughly. Okay, because the tag out here says three seven. Okay, yeah, that's that's. Yeah, so that tag should really be towards the back wall. Okay. Um, otherwise, it's six four, and then is it seven zero at the ridge? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ridge is seven zero. Um, I, I I consider that a flat ceiling, so the, the mm -hmm. ridge is above that a little bit. Okay. Um. So I tried to, you know, as best I could, kind of highlight where those seven foot ceilings are. Um. But yeah, that would be a flat flat ceiling in that area. Okay. And then beyond this this line here, are the ceilings essentially cathedral? Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a tricky area there. So it's, you know, <laughs> at, the, at the the sides of that room are very low. That's like a two foot, uh, you know, knee wall there, basically. And then the center part would be close to seven feet. Okay. Um, so it's pretty, pretty awkward space, but we figured, you know, just leave it open and okay. it could be usable to a certain degree. So what it to get to where so the right now it's indicated um that the attic living area which is 700 is 275 gross square feet um the criteria for a half story is that it's the distance from the finished floor to the underside of the ro the roof structure so it's not at the height level it's at the structure um which is why i was asking about the cathedral link because i think that you're very that the areas at the front, um, this area here and this area here beyond the the shed, and this area, these areas here at the back, none of this has um, the 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 distance to the structure is probably less than seven feet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I believe that the, the number we used did you know consider that as to the structure. Yeah, and two seventy five is definitely significantly smaller than the number that would be half the area of the floor below, especially given the cathedral section here that's walled off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Go ahead and stop the share. Are there any other questions from the board? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hamlin. Just, just out of curiosity, I've never really thought about this before. But suppose, suppose it happened that the it was redesigned uh, the, that top floor, the attic, so that there was zero um, uh, zero square feet that actually met the definition of uh, being seven foot to the understory of the building. Obviously, that involves a certain amount of reconfiguring of the roof and so forth, but just grant me that hypothesis. Would that make it not a story? Can you have a story? with? So it would become feet? pure attic at that point um, because it would have no habitable area. And so this that, is a, I'm sure just historically, of, this was an issue with the way our bylaw was yes. written in the past that you could state law allowed you to have habitable space at seven feet but our half story definition was seven foot three so if you had a flat roof at seven foot two you had it was not a story but it was fully habitable and so that was changed at town meeting um, to the definition we have now so that um it's only the portion that is seven feet uh that counts towards the story because the other portions you could not um legally inhabit so the way that the the store the house here is drawn the area um i'll go back to the share come here so this bonus room area here where it's seven feet this is habitable area so this is allowed to be used um and this bonus this portion here you can count as habitable space um but like these portions here, you can inhabit them, but they're just not, they're just awkward spaces, essentially. Right. And the cathedral ceiling itself is what that that what I'm what I'm trying to explore is whether there's an alternative way of 
making the attic a non-story by I mean the amount of living space that is being mm. contributed by the attic to this over is two two hundred and seventy five square feet out of approximately forty four hundred square feet in the house. Right. So it's not like it's and it's it's a huge percentage and I and certainly the cathedral ceiling will be important for the amenity of the floor below. And my question is really whether there's any way to reconfigure the attic so as to avoid the attic counting as a story and get around mm -hmm. the story problem that way. Well, at that point, they would be down to three stories and not two and a half. Oh, that's that's true. Fortunately, yeah. All right. I, I missed the second half story. <laughs> Okay, well, if there's no other questions from the board. Mr. Chairman, one, one Mr. question. Mr. Dupont, please. Um, so as there was the uh, suggestion uh, by Mr. Pacioni, if that's how I you say it, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Pacioni. And, Close uh, enough. <laughs> the question, so the question about raising the average grade on the uh, basement level, and, and I get tangled in this uh, each time we sort of run across this, but does that mean then by definition it changes from basement to cellar? I believe or so, yeah. So the definitions are slightly different. Um, so I think the basement and cellar it depends on where the midline is. Um, and so, and I, I, yeah, I could go to, I could go look up the definition. Um, but in residential, both basements and cellars count towards the gross floor area. But um, the story definition is very specific with a dimension, whereas the the boundary between a cellar and a basement just depends on what percentage of the of that lowest level um, is below the average grade. And that's half. It's either if it's I above, believe it's half. Yeah, if it's above half, it's a basement. If it's below half, it's a cellar. And and the reason it prompts the question is because. Um, as as to the suggestion that the average grade be raised, and and I think Mr. Hanlon said the same thing that it doesn't necessarily mean that you know we would favor the proposal. I would have to look at it more carefully anyway, and perhaps do a little bit more research. But I just want to make sure that the applicant would be clear that what they're doing is shooting for the story definition based upon um, the fact that the basement. It has that is it four foot six inches, um, half of beyond above the average grade. Regardless of whether I'm quoting that right, I just mm -hmm. think that it needs to be clear to uh, the architect that he's shooting for the right, you know, target. Mm. Yeah. If if that's allowable. Yeah. yeah so my, whether, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. I was just going to say my my understanding is yeah that. But we would need to raise the average grade, you know, five inches or so in order to uh, make this structure go from a three and a half story to a two and a half story. So that's uh, that's what I would uh, be trying to achieve by by changing the average grade. So. Okay. So okay. just with the discussion quick question. Is this house considered? I was looking at the old records at the town site. It listed the house as 1.5 stories. So that was not correct. like that was different at that time and the laws mm -hmm. because or there is some settling of the ground that is causing this uh half or five inches or six inches, whatever you're talking about, is causing the change in the definition of story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I Unfortunately for us, it's you know it's a it's a very it's very crisp and clear in the documentation. So we do have <clears> to, <throat> to to follow what's in the in the submitted information. Oftentimes, the assessor's information is sometimes um, doesn't necessarily hold to the same standard that the building department records do. So there's often a discrepancy between the two. Um, at this point, I would like to open the meeting for public comment. So public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand 
using the button on the Reactions tab. It's going to confirm it is on the Reactions tab these days. It is. Um, so can digitally raise their hand using the button on the Reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, you may dial star nine to indicate you'd like to speak. Uh, you'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are, should be addressed through the chair, and please remember to speak clearly. Uh, for anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed or the allocated time has ended, the public comment period will be closed. So it is now quarter past eight. Um, so we'll give up until 8.45 uh, for public comment. Um, and the board and staff will do its best to show documentation being discussed. So with that, um, we do have a caller who is has raised their hand. Uh, so if your phone number ends in 644, if you could please uh, name an address for the record. Um, and you are muted. Let me see if I can unmute you. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, uh, Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. I was unable to join you. Uh, by Zoom tonight. Um, I do uh, have a question or two for the applicant. Um, I, I know that it may be premature, but I haven't seen a tree plan that would be required to attend this. My guess is that would be required in the subsequent documentation. Is that true? It should be. Um... Well, I, I know that the applicant had earlier stated that there were no trees that were impacted by the by the work that is proposed. Um, but would ask the applicant if I don't know if you have submitted anything to the tree department. No, not mm, at this time because I think, as I said, the uh, the trees are not there are no trees in the way of the construction. Everything is on the boundary of the property, so nothing is. Okay. The, um, okay. the building uh, you go for permit. Uh, my understanding is that the building department will require um, that to have that exchange to have taken place. Yep. Sorry, Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, actually, uh, for a uh, work of this uh, magnitude, a tree plan will be required, not just in it being exchanged with the tree warden to talk about how all the trees around the periphery of this property, which it looks like that's where all the trees are, how how where the con, uh, construction is going to happen and, and construction vehicles are going to enter and, and concrete is poured or whatever has to happen, um, how they'll all be protected um, from uh, their critical root zones around each one of the trees in it. And Mr. Mr. Chairman, it does look like uh, some of the trees will, their root zones will be significantly impacted. Like, for instance, if I look uh, on street view, I can see on the right-hand side of the property, there's a, a, a tree which isn't huge, but it looks sort of like an apple tree or something. And they're talking about, I believe, expanding the driveway into the root zone of where that tree is at. And that is in the setback. So I'm wondering, uh, I, I just am wanting to caution the applicant that they are going to need to think through their approach to protecting the trees as part of this project. Sure, we'll do. I mean, I think that is a. Thank yeah, I think that's a dogwood tree, which is I believe you are referring to, which is right next to the deck right now. But in fact, the deck will be taken off. So, uh, yeah, I like I don't know how much is that. Like, yeah, I think when the construction or the building permits will. Uh, like as uh, Mr. Clean said, that we will have that all the tree plant involved in that at that point of time. That is right. Yeah, we'll have that done and do this. Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. It's just that in, in expanding the driveway, I know that that means usually digging down and and uh, and tree roots are are not well impacted. The deck probably sits on top of the current grade uh, and uh, it doesn't really excavate into it. So I just I, I just want to caution that they need to think that through uh, when they when they draw pull the permit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, are there other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close the public comment period uh, for this particular hearing. 
So what the board has in front of us, um, we have two uh, special permit requests. Uh, one is for a large addition. One is for the the porch and the deck that extend um, out towards the, the property lines on the two front facades of the building. Um, in addition, uh, there's currently the need for a variance um, due to the the number of stories uh, that the proposed uh, house as it is currently uh, documented is it th is three and a half stories um and there was the uh the the, the statement from mr moore from the uh, from the tree committee about um just uh, the question about the the tree and the adjacent to where the proposed um, expansion of the driveway is um so I would turn to the board and and I believe um, it was Mr. Dupont who had said, or Mr. Hannon who had said it before, um, that it might be advantageous for the board to see that if the, you know, the, the, the board is concerned that the, the variance criteria cannot be met on this property. Um, and with that, the applicant has uh, put forward that they would be interested in raising the grade uh, so that the average grade is increased so that the, the lowest level no longer qualifies as a story. Um, and I think the the request that was made by the, the board member was that we we see what that looks like before uh, we would move forward uh, with with any votes in the matter, because that would certainly impact what we need to approve and what the, the scope of what we need to approve will be. Um, so I would ask if the if the, the amend if the applicant um would be amenable to a continuance uh to allow them to explore uh raising the what raising what their options would be for raising the grade and how that would impact their need for a, a variance sure so we can do that okay hey, John? yeah yeah that's uh that's not like the right path for sure great um so the board has um we have hearing scheduled for Tuesday, January 23rd, and then another for Tuesday, February 13th. Um, would either of those two dates work for you? January 23rd, let me take a look. That works for me, Rob. Do you think we can do that at that time? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, whatever, uh, whatever you want to do. I'll, I'll be yeah. there. January twenty third looks good. Okay. Um, how soon would you be able to provide revised documentation? Um, unfortunately, that's going to depend on our surveyor because he's the one that's <laughs> going to run the numbers. So I don't really have a good answer for you. Um, when when do you want it by? I guess maybe. I mean, we know. would ideally we would want it nearly a week ahead. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so if, if Thursday, if you think Thursday next week is going to be difficult to make, then I would encourage you to consider the February 13 instead. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't promise you guys that we'll get it to you by then. Um, can we come back to you? Like, you know, once we check with our uh, surveyor that if he's able to accommodate this in uh, this much time. Uh, so, so we have to continue to a specific date. So if you want, we can continue to the January 23rd. And if you're unable to make that date, just let us know. Sure. Um, and then we'll, you'll have to come briefly before us and we'll just continue again. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. If that works for you guys. That, that, would, be, that would be ideal. Okay. Do that. Yeah. We'll try to work with our surveyor and see. Okay. Do you have any additional questions for the board? I don't. Do you have anything wrong? No, I'm good. No, I think uh, we got clear direction. So I appreciate that. Is there anything else that the board would like to see from the applicant when they come back? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I don't actually want to see anything as complete as a tree plan, but it would be it would be helpful to me at least to have uh, uh, to make sure that the applicant has looked at what is likely to be required in order to save the trees on the site and make sure that that. Uh, that they at least have taken the first step towards an, an analyzing this with the understanding they're going to have to go before the tree warden and 
um, and get the approval of a tree plan. I was impressed. They have, well, it's, it's true that not much of the addition, none of the addition is going to actually happen where there are currently trees. The backyard is largely devoid of trees. Uh, there's nevertheless a series of trees that are some of which are the, the, the one further back is quite large uh, that uh, is potentially affected by construction activities. And I just like to be certain that uh, that is front and center on the applicant's radar and that they have a clear sense of, of uh, what problems that, that would pose and what the solutions would be. Uh, it may be they they pose no problems at all, but at this point, I think that it would be helpful to know that they've taken the next step of thinking about it and coming to a reasoned conclusion about it. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's means, means one of the reasons we actually bought this property is because of the trees. So we do want the trees. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's why means we are like beans. I think we have eight trees in our property. Nobody else in our neighborhood has that many trees. It's all, it's all in our properties, almost eight. Right. Uh, so yeah, we will, means if I understand your request, you don't need a tree plan, but for, for our next meeting, right? Or do we need a tree plan for the next meeting? I, I wouldn't, from, from my point of view, you don't really need to have a tree plan. We don't get to approve tree plans anyway. The tree warden who knows much more about this than we do will will do that. I would just like to have a, a first step of saying, in general, this is the strategy we do. We thought about the potential construction impacts and we, and you know, what, what you think as your basic outline is a tree plan before you actually go final on it, just to be sure that, that, you know, the first step of analyzing it has taken place and you're aware of any problems that might exist uh, and that we can have that degree of assurance. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could talk to the tree warrant and have our surveyor also maybe make some suggestions. Um, I do think that tree by the driveway is going to be impacted looking at it mm -hmm. now. So. Yeah, because That's, I think it's uh, yeah the first tree maybe a little bit, but I think yeah, on the boundaries, I think the advantage is we have a side lane or a side street which is open, and the distance between the trees is pretty big. I think yes. it's one and a half, like it's a hundred feet. So each tree is approximately twenty feet, twenty five feet apart from each other. So, but yeah, I think we do have. Uh, we will take into consideration to not impact any of the trees. All right, so with that, um, I would entertain a motion to continue the hearing for 49 Dixon Avenue until Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Second. And Mr. DuPont, there's a vote of the board to continue this hearing on 49 Dixon Avenue until the next board, excuse me, until the board's next meeting, which was uh, Tuesday, January 23rd. Uh, so with that, a vote of the members present, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanley. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are continued on 49 Dixon Avenue. Thank you very much for being yeah, here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Have a nice evening. Thank, thank you. you, you too. Bye. So with that... Uh, this brings us to item four on our agenda for tonight, which is docket 3777, uh, 95 George Street. So if I could ask the applicant um, to go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. Is Jane Youngren or Marianne Henley here? See Jane Youngren's name in the window. Unmute. There Hello? you are. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, we live at 95 George. We've been here for oh 20 plus years. And we would love to build a bigger foyer for especially weather like this. Um, with having a dog, it's great to be able to wipe her off from the snow and the salt and the sand and everything. And for folks to put their um, jackets and things when we have visitors. And a front deck, I would love. I deliver Meals on Wheels and the amount of folks that I see that are isolated in their homes and there are people that 
will sit out in their driveway in a chair. I'd love to be able to just sit out on our front porch and say hi to all the neighbors when they walk by. So that's what we're proposing is a little bit larger of a foyer and a front deck. Okay, I'll go ahead and share the drawings here. Uh, so what you have here um, is the existing house. They have an existing small uh, vestibule on the front side of the house uh, with a couple steps leading up to it and then walk down to George Street. And what they are proposing is a larger enclosed entry on the front, uh, a bigger stoop, and then also having a section of roofed deck off on the side. Um, so this is the existing condition and that's rendered here. And then this is the proposed condition. So the this is the enclosed, uh, the entry piece, and then this is the deck um, that's beside it. And that's the full extent of the of the work, as I understand it. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and then just a couple of side elevation and a couple of structural details. Um, and so this project is submitted as a special permit application under 539. Uh, so it'd be 539A. And um, it requires the board to make a special permit finding um, that the because the proposed entry piece is larger than 25 square feet, that the board is required to make a finding um, with the special permit uh, category in order to uh, approve the plan. Let me go with green tab. Oop, too far. There's 539. Um, the portion of the enclosed entrance is larger than the allowed above may be extended into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district by a special permit. And the required front yard setback is 25 feet, and this would be um, reducing that to 20 foot three. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and ask the board if there are any uh, questions on this application. Seeing none, go ahead and again open the hearing for public comment. Uh, public questions and comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Uh, members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone can dial star nine to indicate they would like to speak. Be called upon by the chair, ask for a name and address, and given time for your questions and comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to address this application? Uh, we have uh, Emily Reynolds. Hello, um, I'm Emily Reynolds. I live at 103 George Street, which is two doors up the hill from Jane and Marianne. Um, I just wanted to say that I think the porch and the bigger foyer are going to be a really nice feature on their house. I can't think of any way that the small reduction in the setback would be disruptive to us on the block. Um, we have a really friendly and sociable block. There's always kids playing and people walking dogs and everyone chatting. And I can already picture Jane and Marianne sitting out there with their dog or their friends and keeping an eye on what the kids are up to and chatting with us as we walk by. Um, I think it will be a really great addition to our street. Thank you. Sounds lovely. Thank you so much. Um, uh, next is Jessica, Jessica Pesk. Yeah, hi, I'm Jessica Page. I'm at 91 George Street. I'm right next door to Jane and Marianne. Um, and I think the plans look great. It seems like a great idea. I'm jealous actually myself. Um, and Jane and Marianne are sort of like the captains of our street. So I think like Emily, I can already see them sitting out there on the porch and just like overseeing the whole neighborhood, um, which we are all always very thankful for. Um, so I definitely recommend uh, approving it. 
Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, a very simple and straightforward application. Uh, it's a request for a front porch and an enclosed front entrance. Um, I will say the only question I had for the applicant. Um, so at the front door, when you've the way it's drawn right now, when you get to the front door, there's not a covering on that outside door. Um, and it's not until you get, you get into the entryway that you're covered. Um, I just want to confirm that that was what you intended. Yes, that's what we have now in our um, foyer now. We have a door that swings out mm -hmm. and you walk into the foyer. And that's okay. what we're proposing. Okay. Because the is the covered area. Very good. Um, and so this is, again, this is under 539A, um, where porches are enclosed entrances larger than 25 square feet in area, um, may extend into the minimum yard by special permit. And so there are uh, seven special permit criteria, which the board uh, needs to f make a finding on. Um, so the first is whether the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district, um, and it is under 539A. Uh, why the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, I think the, the neighbor spoke very well to that, that uh, this provides an opportunity for the residents to better participate in the activity of the street and to uh, make it a, a more welcoming um, and uh, cohesive community, which are, are are definitely goods for the for this and for any neighborhood. Uh, number three is the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, it would certainly do neither. It could possibly improve pedestrian safety uh, by the by the additional uh, attention being paid by those who uh, would now have a porch to uh, be on the front of the house. Uh, number four, the requested use will not overload any public system. Um, it will not have any direct impact on any public systems. Requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the neighborhood. Um, it did, the, the front entry porches are, are ubiquitous uh, over Arlington uh, as our front porches and as the neighbors stated that this is very well in keeping with that pattern. Um, the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare. Um, there would be no no negative impacts, and it will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, so it would not do that. Um, so I think the board could make those uh, those seven findings, um, and which would allow the board uh, to vote on this application. Are there any other questions uh, from the board in regards to this application? Okay, if not, uh, the chair would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hamlin. Um, I move that the board uh, approve the application, making the findings that were outlined the chair and are supported in the record. Second. Thank you both. It occurs to me now that, of course, I have skipped over a step. Um, so I have skipped over the, the all-important condition step. Um, <laughs> So the <laughs> for applications such as this, the board typically applies three uh, standard conditions, uh, which I will now read into the record. The first is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, standard condition number two is the building inspector is hereby notified they are to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. Building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And Condition number three, that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to the special permit grant. 
Are there any additional conditions which members of the board would want to propose? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Uh, this isn't an additional condition, though it used to be, but I just wanted to draw the attention of the board and, and the applicant to uh, uh, the provision 5.3.9D, which now makes it clear that the uh, porch does not become a, a part of the sound foundation wall and that any uh, enclosing of the porch uh, the, beyond what is present today would require an additional special permit. But that doesn't have to be a, a, any longer a, one of the conditions because it has now been added to the bylaw. Thank you Thanks. for that. So with that, Mr. Hanlon, I would ask if you would mind uh, restating your motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that the uh, board approve the application, making the necessary findings and uh, subject to the conditions that have been read into the record by the chair. So thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So this is a vote of the board to approve the special permit for uh, 95 George Street with the three conditions. Um, and with that, a roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The special permit for 95 George Street is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your porch. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, neighbors. Thank you. <laughs> Have a nice evening, all. Thank you, too. So with that, that brings me to where... Here's our agenda. Uh, this brings us to item five on our agenda, which is docket 3780, uh, 96 Jason Street. Uh, so if I could ask the applicant to introduce themselves and tell us what they're proposing. Sure. This is uh, Mark Popner and uh, my wife Brandy's on uh, another column just on opposite ends of the coast here. Uh, and we have uh, John Leone with us this evening who's going to help uh, uh, present our application for us. Um, we are, I'm sorry, just briefly, we are um, uh, renovating the uh, carriage house that's on the property, the existing carriage house. Um, uh, as part of under the AD law um, and are uh, seeking a variance given the current layout of where the carriage house is uh, with respect to the property lines. Uh, Brandy, do you want to introduce yourself? I know my wife has to step out real quick because she's got to go pick up her kiddo from hockey. Um, Hi, I'm Brandy. Um, I do have to jump off in a few minutes to go, go pick up my son from hockey and I will hopefully be back um, in time, but if not, um, Mark is here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you. John, you are on the call, correct? Yes, I'm right here. Attorney okay. John Leone representing the Hoffners. Um, we are seeking a special permit slash variance under um, section 5.9.2B1. As the corner of their garage is three feet from the property line, which is in violation of section 3.6 of the property setback requirements, requiring a six foot setback. What they're asking for the variance is for that particular corner as it, it's an existing garage that already is there. What they're proposing to do is put a small addition, a um, renovate the second floor, put a spiral staircase up to that second floor, an exterior stairway for a second means of egress and add a um, small dormant area to the back of the garage, which wouldn't be visible. Um, the and we submitted the plans and the elevations which show that the dormant area that's going to be added matches the character and integrity of the building itself as well as the main home. The building is already serviced by, um, I believe, underground water and um, um, utility lines, and it has its own existing, I believe, um, storage line running out to the street already. So they just want to put an ADU in there, about 781 square feet onto that second floor area. And it's proposed, um, the anticipated it'll be one to two um, occupants at most in there. Thank you. I just um, wanted to, oh, sorry. Sorry, go ahead, Ms. Hoffner. I just wanted to add that um, it's it's um, more of a restoration project because it, it actually, it's a historic um, property and it, um, it used to be 
an apartment. And um, we did already get approval um, from the um, Historic Commission for, for the oh, designs. Right. Thank you very much. I was just going to ask Mr. Lowney about that. Um, yeah, the historic district, Joanne Robinson has issued, I believe, and it's on, should be in your file, a letter of approval. Yes. Yep. So we will go ahead and share that. Um, so this is the letter from the Arlington Historical Commission. Um, and essentially sets out that the plants of the restorations, uh, expresses what is in the drawings that are before us as well. Um, that essentially it's an existing structure. The only thing that's being added really uh, is the the dormer with the, the two gables with the shed in between and changes of windows and converting uh, some louvered areas um, into windows. Um, and they, they plan on rebuilding the um, cupola to okay. match existing. And then there's going to be an exterior stair, and this has all been approved um, in December by the Historic Commission. So that Correct. is all approved. Uh, this is the plot plan of the site. So Jason Street at the front, Norfolk on the side. Yeah, you can um, see that one corner up front on the garage. It's too close. Yeah. yeah. And the rear corner is seven this... point, almost eight feet back. And on the other yeah. side, Christian, yes, there you go. Yeah, yeah, right there. Right. But this but this is exist this carriage house is entirely existing. There's no changes whatsoever to the location or foundation, correct? That is correct. I believe yeah. it's probably a contemporaneous with the main house. Yeah. Um, so then these are the drawings. Um so the front corner, so this is that corner that we were looking at that is both adjacent to the side lot line. Right. Um the proposed uh entrance stair here on the side. And the dormer that uh, will face the rear. Uh, so this the is only other proposed on the front is that doorway to the extreme right, the passage to a door. Okay. The, the, the side that's against the property line, the rear, you can egress door, windows, and that's the cupola. And then the side facing the house. Uh, mm -hmm. with this with the egress stair from the second floor correct and then the garage level um so the door in there's a proposed staircase to connect uh the two levels will the garage still be used as a for storage of vehicles i believe so i believe that's the plan is it not mr and mrs Hoffner? that's correct yes it will be yes okay and then up above uh, this is the proposed living area up on the upper floor. So 781 square feet. So it is less than the 900 square foot uh, maximum for an ADU. Yes. Uh, and then just framing plans section. Yeah. And you can see the dormant area in the back. Yeah. Right. Um, we also had submitted some um, photographs of the existing. Um, if you wish to see those or have any questions about those, we'd be glad to answer them. Oh, oh that's it. Yep. Drive. Yeah, that will bring you to a file. It's a Google Drive file, I believe, yep. of some sort, and it just was way too many photos to <laughs> upload and download. All right, let's see if this work. Um, so share. Let's stop and then reshare. There we go. There we go. Just one of the exterior photos. So I believe that's the existing door in the rear of the garage. I believe so, yes. Yeah. On the side. Oh, on the side. Okay. Yeah. Near the house. Yeah. Okay. Corner. 
believe that's the offending corner. <laughs> and then, so this is the side that faces that. Yeah, you uh, can the, see the yeah, building the is in need of repair. Yeah. Um, which is the renovation project they wish to undertake as well. Porch. And that's what they're going, those, that oh, stairwell, right. that I stairwell thought... and um, railing is what they'll be matching on the new stairway. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then this, this dormer feature is what they're looking as well, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a, a mini version of that. The garage, and you can see where that new entrance doorway will be. To again, matching that's where the stairwell will be located. Yeah, and the new do entry doors, and yeah. effectively here on that upper level. Mm -hmm. That's existing rear. More detail. Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> <clears throat> that's just a example of a Jason property. Well, I think that's more of a an example of the cupola. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's an ex uh, the our existing cupola has slats. This one is an example just up the street on Jason as well, using glass um, mm -hmm. that I think we're going to match. Oh, okay. Great. In their house. That's yes, the last in the one. view of the street. Yep. Okay. Great. So this is coming before us. So. Uh, Apologies to the to the applicant for all the confusion over this. Um, they were initially directed to the ARB on this, um, and the ARB turned it back to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, it was uh, filed as a variance, but uh, this is actually um, under the ADU bylaw, which is Section 592B1, Paragraph 5. Um, the, this the board may approve an accessory dwelling unit in a, a non-attached building that is within six feet of the property line by a special permit. Um, and the board needs to make a specific finding in that regard. Um, the, the finding that the board needs to make is that the creation of an accessory dwelling unit is not substantially more, more detrimental to the neighborhood than the use of such accessory building as a private garage or other allowed use. So that's what's before the board. Um, I had also looked at the design, residential design guidelines on this, um, but seeing as it has been through historic, um, historic will have done a far greater job of reviewing the design, the exterior design intent uh, than this board would do. Uh, so we'll defer to them. Um, are there any questions uh, or comments from the board in regards to this application? Mr. Chair? Ms. Hoffman. Um, I'll just note that I think this is the first or one of the first AD, um, accessory dwelling units in a um, you know historic property that we've seen on this board. Is that right? I think Maybe so. The very first? Yeah, it's just it, it's nice to see it incorporated in a historic property. Yeah. And I find it interesting that this this definitely appears that, that that this was inhabited in the past. Do you have any sense as to when it was last occupied? Uh, from from what we learned from uh, the prior owner, as well as just looking at old drawings, and uh, if you look at the state, we have pictures. I don't know, John, if those were uploaded as well. If pictures of the internal. Is this mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of destroyed mm -hmm. now, right? Run over by raccoons and stuff like that. But it was clearly set up as a uh, chauffeur's quarters. Oh. So I do believe it's original to the house. Um, those, like, for example, those tiny windows that you saw on the right <laughs> side of the garage are the old stall, horse stall windows. Um, so I believe that was what it was for originally. Um, that's the that's the most context we were able to kind of dig up. We don't have, like, the original blueprints or anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah. 
See, that mm -hmm. would explain the sewer and water lines yeah. for yeah. the chauffeur quarters. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I will open the board, uh, the board, excuse me, open the hearing for public comment. Public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decisions. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone might dial star nine to indicate they would like to speak. Are there any members of the public who wish to address the board on this application? I see none, so I'll go ahead and close the public comment period for this hearing. Um, so I said before, uh, the board would need to uh, make a finding that the creation of the accessory dwelling unit is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the use of such accessory building as a private garage or other allowed use. Um, certainly in this situation is a sort of a unique situation where it is actually being returned to its former residential use um, after a period of, of disuse. Um, and to assist the, the board in making this decision, we typically review the uh, seven findings that were required for a special permit. Uh, so the first of those is whether the use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district, um, and it is under 539B. Um, the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Uh, so the, the increase in uh, housing stock is a, you know, very much a noted need in this town and in the region, and the return of an unused residential unit uh, to the, the pool of available uh, residences uh, is absolutely desirable to the town. Um, the use would not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, it definitely appears that the, the existing house and driveway are well able to accommodate um, should the, the resident of the unit have a vehicle uh, and would not otherwise detriment anything with, uh, with traffic or pedestrian safety, uh, would not overload any public system. Um, it is already connected and otherwise it would be sort of a de minimis increase in, uh, in the use of those services, uh, would not impair the character and integrity of the neighborhood. Um, guys to, you know, commend the, the applicant for, uh, their work with the historic commission on, uh, really designing something that is very much in keeping with, uh, the character of the house and the character of the neighborhood and, and certainly the historic, uh, nature of both, um, uh, would not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, no. Uh, residential neighborhood, uh, residential use in a residential neighborhood would not do so, and it would not cause an excess use detrimental to the neighborhood. And uh, this is within the certainly within the, the character and the intent of the zoning bylaws. Um, so, are there any additional questions or comments from the board in regards to the findings the board needs to make? Seeing none, I will remember to go on to the condition section this time. Um, <laughs> there are three standard conditions that the board would include. Those have been previously read into the record this evening. We'll not uh, read them in again unless anyone would particularly like to hear me read them again. Um, so those are the three standard conditions. Are there any additional conditions which members of the board feel would be appropriate for this application? Seeing none, uh, the chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I move that the um, board approve the application subject to these three standard conditions. Second. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. This is a vote of the board to approve the special permit uh, for 96 Jason Street, which is uh, to allow the uh, conversion of the upper floor of an existing garage to be an accessory dwelling unit um, at that address. With that, so roll call vote of the board, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you so much, you everyone. Thank you. And Mr. Appreciate chair, it. Just to try, I have to say your um, board administrator is very efficient and helpful. Ms. Wonderful. Raxton, yes, she's most Thank helpful. You. 
Well, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. <clears throat> Okay, so with that, the board has our next hearing date is January 23rd. Uh, there are three, there were, were three items on that agenda. Um, and now we have a, con a possible continuance um, of Dixon Avenue that may also occur on that evening. Um, and then past that, we have February 13th, which I believe there's two items on the agenda at the moment. Um, and then February 22nd, 27th, excuse me, after that. Um, that those are things coming up. Are there any any other items the board needs to discuss at this time? Nope. Seeing none, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I'd especially like to thank Colleen Ralston for her assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting and also for all the other things she does in support of this board that uh, don't get their, their due in the meetings. Uh, please note that the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of its proceedings. It's our understanding the recording made by ACMI will be available on demand at ACMI.tv within the coming days. If anyone has questions or comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, so moved. Thank you. Second. Mr. DuPont, a roll call vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. And the chair votes aye. The board is adjourned. Thank you all so very much. Night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Take care, everyone.